All right, so let's come into the back end of Optimize Press here. Now, generally speaking, there's two ways to make a page. The first one is you go to the Optimize Press menu, go to Create New Page, and then you're going to get this screen right here. And as you can see, we can create a blank page, and then we've got various other types of pages like opt-in pages, sales pages, membership, webinar, launch funnel pages. And as you scroll down, you'll see that these are all templates that we've got set up in the system. Basically, they come with it by default, and you could just simply hover over any of these and say, use this template, and you get started, okay? And you can see what they look like. You got a bunch of different squeeze pages here. You've got a bunch of different sales pages. This is a custom one that I put in there because once you create your own page, you can actually save it as a preset, and then you don't have to recreate it again. Huge time saver. As we jump down to webinar pages, you've got all these membership pages. So if you want to build a course or something with it, and then you've got home pages and various other random pages. And then you got what they call blank pages. But essentially, you know, these are all the different ways to make a page. Now, another thing that you can do is that once you've taken the time to create a page, then let me go to the page list in my site here. There you are. Now you can filter by the pages that you were built using the live editor because this will actually tell you whether it's an optimized press page. So if you click on one of these or just click that filter, here we are. We've got, this is all the pages on my site. How many are there? 54 of them that I have built using Optimize Press. Now a really quick way, and I do this often to make a page on my site, is that I'll go to a page that is somewhat like what I want it to be and I'll just simply go clone page. And that literally creates an exact copy, all things in there of, uh, of the entire page. And then all I gotta do is go in there and make the changes that I want. So that's a huge time saver. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna create a blank page. I just wanna show you how the live editor pops up if you don't use one of the pre-built templates. So we're gonna go to create a new page. That's what we're on right now. And we're gonna go pick a blank page here. We'll just pick, let's say, uh, this one. Now realize it's not gonna pre-fill these things in. It's just kind of setting up the basic, basic structure. So we'll just call this test page. This isn't a page we're actually gonna use. Okay, it's opening up the live editor. Let me get this little app sumo thing out of the way. And here we are, we are inside the live editor. Now this is what you're gonna get if you are now uh, creating a page from scratch. Now most often you are probably gonna use one of the pre-built templates and then modify them. But the only reason I'm bringing up the live editor like this is because I wanna show you how the basic framework of the live editor works. Now first let's go over to my little digital whiteboard here. I wanna show you something on, on how the grid system works on our pages. Okay, Optimize Press essentially works by way of a grid. And if you understand this, it will make the live editor easier to work with, okay? And it's a, just a simple grid. If you look at most pages, they are set up as a series of rows, okay? And just as a, uh, just to kind of demonstrate, let's say this is your header area. This would be like a header row. This would be your content row. And then down here you have a footer row, okay? So that would be a very basic row system. Now let's say you've got a sidebar over here on one side, okay? Well, that would be, you know, another section of the grid. Actually, this is a bad drawing. It would probably be something like this. You have a row, which would be your header. And then you'd have another row, content, but you might have two columns in this content. You've got one that's bigger because your actual stuff will go here. And then this would be a sidebar. But you see how this entire section from here to here, that whole section is a row. And then you'd have another row down at the bottom that is the footer. And so you can see how this essentially is a grid. It is a grid system on how this actually works, okay? Because you've got the header row, you've got the this content row, you just happen to have two columns in it, and then you've got another row down here. Now, generally speaking, your pages are gonna get more complicated than this, but it all operates 
on a grid. Now let me pull over one of my landing pages and show you the grid. Okay, so we're now looking at one of my landing pages. This is a landing page for my podcast, which is Coffee Break Blogging. Now I just wanna show you how this works in the grid. Now up here at the top, this area right here is a row. Now, some people may be wondering, how did I get this fancy header in place? Well, all I really did was because I used the Genesis framework with a, with a custom child theme as my main blog, I simply went into, I viewed source on one of my own pages, grabbed the HTML from my header, from the Genesis side, and then I used, and I'll show you how this works in a minute in the live editor, but I just basically used a custom HTML block and I just literally pasted this bad boy in here with my custom style sheets. And that's how I did that. So, cause Optimize Press would probably have a hard time making this type of a setup here, especially with this lab logo. That's how I did it. I basically just used a custom HTML block and I threw it inside of that header row. Now the next row in my grid is this. Okay, next row down. Now what I've done is I've got a two column, uh, actually, no, let's take that back. This is probably a row right here. Then and there's another row right here. And what I've done is I've got two columns. So one has these buttons in it, the other one's got this video. Now as we move down, I've got a row right here with two columns in it. So I place that there and I place that there. There's another, and then as we scroll down, let me get my whiteboard out of the way so I can do that. Do, 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 do. Bring this back up. So as we go down, we've got, because this is a two column row up here that I just showed you, the next one we want it to take the full width. So now at this point, we have a full row so that this is here and this, which is the, uh, the smart, podcast player from Pat Flynn's company. And uh, so I actually do use that as well. And so you might think, okay, how did I get that in there? Well, you know, it gives you a short code to, to em embed that player and you can put short codes into your optimized press blocks and it will work just fine. Okay. So you can see as we move on down, how the grid system comes into play in the real world. Now, if we come back up, you could see how we have a basic header row, basic row here. Now let's go back to the live editor and I want to show you how to set up the basic structure of a page like this. Okay, here we are, blank slate. It can be a little bit daunting, right? But it's really not when you understand that we're working with rows and columns and stuff like that. So we don't have anything in here. We're going to have to add a new row. Here, Optimize Press gives you the basic layout so you can choose from. You can do a one column, which would be like a full width row. You can have a two, two column, three column, four column, five column. If you want to get fancy, like have uh, one column take up two thirds of the space and have a little sidebar on the side, you can do that. But this is how you do it. That's just setting up the row. Now, typically you'll probably put like a header or something at the top. So I'm going to close, I'm going to make a one column. I'm going to throw that in there. Now there it is, okay? Now the reason it's got this, this space over here is because of the type of template I chose. Um, if I had chosen a full width template, which is actually what I usually prefer, uh, because let, let's say we go back to, where, where's the page that I was just on here? See how this color goes all the way to the end? This is like a 100% width thing. I don't have any weird uh, background out to the sides. So actually, let's just go ahead and show you how that works. Let's close this. And we're going to choose a full width layout. Um, test page. It might conflict with the one I just made. So let's just add two in there. Good. Here we go. All right, here we are. Now we're back to uh, the same live editor, except this time it's not gonna put any constraints on us down the middle. Let's add a header row, one column. There it is, okay? Now, then we're gonna add, let's say we're gonna have another row below it and we're gonna break it up into two columns if you want to do something like, uh, actually, let's put a headline in place so that you could put on one row. Let's go on back, where are we? There we go. So we'll add a new row right below it. Now, if you wanted to add one above it, you would just come up here and, and do it there. 
But this add element, this is the row that we just made. And it's just asking us what we want to put in there. Okay. Let's add another row real quick. And this one, let's, let's use this. Actually, let's do this because we're still going to going to put in a headline, right? So now we've got two rows underneath this. Let's add one that has uh, a sidebar kind of a deal there. All right, see how this is coming together? And let's say down at the bottom, we want to add a footer row. Now again, we'll go in and make that a 100%. Now let's go up to the top and this is our header row. What do you want to put in there? Well, you click on add element. And you've got all these things that we can add. Arrows, audio players, bullet blocks, buttons, calendar date, blah, blah. You can, here's the custom HTML. This is the one that I use because I wanted to drop my own custom stuff from my blog into there. So you would just do that. You'd pop your HTML in there and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, you can put images, you can do whatever the heck you want. Now, if you want to change the like the background color of it, you would shoot you would click on the row properties, actually this row click on row properties, you know, is it a full width row? Uh huh. Uh, row background, let's say we wanted to make it black. So you would do it on both because you can actually make a gradient here. And I'll just show you how that works. Now we got ourselves a black header. Okay. Now let's say we want to do something like this blue thing underneath it. Great. Let's go back. So we got that go to the next row, click on this little pin thing, because that's how you edit the properties of the row. And let's just choose some kind of a bluish thing. It's not going to be exact, but you get the idea. In fact, I'm going to make this one a little darker to show you how you can make a gradient. See how we got a gradient now? Now, let's say we want to put a headline. Let's get all that crap out of the way. I hate how it does that. Okay, and let's add an element. We're going to add a headline. So just start typing that and it'll give you a shortcut. Headline, you got all these different styles of it. We'll just pick this one and we'll just say, this is my awesome headline. Okay. Come on down. We can choose from a bunch of fonts that are built in, including a bunch of Google fonts. So let's, let's do something like, um, I don't know, Alice, not that familiar with it, but let's give it a whirl and let's make it a little bit bigger, like 42 pixels, make it bold, choose our color. Well, white would probably look best on this dark background. And this let's let's make our letter spacing a little bit less and see how it looks. We want it to be center aligned, good to go, right? Let's try this. Okay, we got ourselves an awesome headline. Okay. Now at any point, if you want to see what this is going to look like, you can save it. And then you just click view public link. Okay, so here we are. I had to go in and basically turn optimize press on. It's just a, like a little extra thing I've got going on on my blog. But you can see exactly what we've built here. This is the live editor. This is what we've actually built in our preview. Okay, so let's say that you wanted to keep this row uh, like it is, but you wanted to give it a little extra padding underneath that headline. So it's kind of center aligned. Well, how do you do that? Go back to the properties and you can do top padding and bottom padding. Let's just pop this thing down by like 20 pixels and just kind of see what it actually looks like. Okay. Hit save and continue. Go back to our thing and refresh it. And you can see how it popped on down. Okay. And so you can kind of see how this is built. We go to our content thing we can put in a standard text block right here. And let's just say that we're going to, um, type some, you know, text here. Let me just copy some uh, random stuff from my site just to kind of fill it up. Doot, 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 doot. Okay, go on back, drop that in there. Now, if you want to control the, the font or any of that, you click on advanced options, you can control how this text actually looks, you got all the same options here. But we'll just drop it in there. Okay, we've got some text. Now we've got ourselves a sidebar we can drop something in. Let's say you wanted to drop, uh, I don't know, an, an image into there. Images that pick one from the media library. Now you would obviously need to make sure you pick an image that's the right size and that type of thing. I don't, I'm just going to pick something random. So it's probably, uh, let's drop it down to 300 because if you put a really big image into a very small space, it's obviously going to mess up your design, right? Click on that. 
And you can also control up here. You can say custom image width and you can actually shrink it or whatever you need to do. But there, we got ourselves an image in our sidebar. And let's say we wanted to make our footer area uh, black to match the header. So we'll just click on the properties again. For our row background, you just choose black. For both of them, since we don't want a gradient. Okay. And let's see what the heck we've built so far. It's coming together really quick here. That's because we're not getting super fancy. Okay, and the, see the footer doesn't have anything in it. So it's just kind of like sitting there like a little line. So if you wanted to do it, you'd add an element. And let's add, um, let's say it's a footer. So you probably want to add some text or something. Uh, copyright goes here. You know, whatever you might want to drop in there. Okay, now you'll notice it doesn't go, it goes in with the default color. So if you want to edit any particular element, you see it when you hover, you get these little buttons. You just click on the one for editing the properties. Advanced properties. Let's change that thing to white so it'll show up a lot better. And you know what? Let's center, let's center align it because it's on a footer. It might make a little bit more sense. All right, let's go ahead and save that. There we are. So you can see how this is coming together. It basically works on a grid. You're gonna have your various rows, and let's say we wanted to insert a new row right in between this blue one and the one we already have. Just go, go in there, hit add new row, pick what kind you want, you know, whatever it is. You've got a few little presets down here you can use as well. Um, let's say we wanted to have something on either side there then a column in the middle, just select it, and then there you go. Okay, now if you decide that's not what you want, you just come up here and delete the row that you just created. That's all you're doing. You're setting, it's a grid system and you start working your way down on what you want to look like and you can build any page that you'd like. That's the live editor. It's really, really powerful and you can essentially build any type of page that you want all inside of WordPress. And then once again, when, once you take the time to really tweak it and all that kind of stuff, you can build pages like this one that I actually use on my site. Uh, it, it's just the same grid system I just used. This is a bullet block. This, I just put, brought an image in there, okay? This is using a short code because that'll work. Optimized Press works inside of WordPress, so you can use short codes. Down here, we've got... Uh, the arrow block, which is one of the blocks available with WordPress, but I've just simply spaced it around so it kind of had this little flow to it like this. Um, and it's, you know, you spend some time and you tweak it and you can essentially build anything that you'd like and do it all with Optimized Press. So it's a really, really powerful plugin. Now in my next video, what I'd like to do is actually pull up one of my landing pages inside the live editor just to let you see how it's put together.